Okay, Paolo, uh, please start your presentation. Okay, so, everybody. Um, I have a... Anyway, okay, I'll try to, to, to make it anyway. Um, so, um, I'll start by making some context because I don't know you guys, so just, just to try to be in sync on, on, on the grounds on which this presentation is based. And then I'll go straight to the problem. The problem is that uh, in Linux and in Linux-based systems, are, there are very high latencies. Uh, there are these very bad latency issues, and I'll show you uh, these problems in practice with some recorded demos uh, on mm, several kinds of hardware. Um, basically, I will use this high key uh, board on which I'll show you results with both Android and uh, Ethereum distributions. Then I'll move to my my phone, my Google Pixel 2, at least before my kid try to, <laughs> to crack it. Um, then I'll show you uh, results with cheaper hardware, this uh, Poco plug. And on the, on the opposite end, with a laptop using the same the same SD card, so the same storage hardware. There, is, there are many many tests going on, but I will stop only on these ones. And uh, the things that I'll show you uh, may arouse some some questions, some doubts, and uh, I'll try to uh, answer the um, the questions that are more. Uh, probable, um, I guess, in, in your minds after the things that I'm about to show you. So, uh, the um, context. Context is that of the IOS schedulers. These are these components in, in the Linux kernel in general, in any kernel, components that decide the order in which IO input output requests are to be served. Uh, why is it needed to, to decide this order? Uh, because this uh, provides many benefits. Uh, one of these benefits is reaching a high throughput because uh, storage devices are very, very sensitive uh, to uh, the order in which I.O. arrives to, to them. Um, another important issue is guaranteeing a low latency and fairness in the cases where several entities compete for the same storage. So inside the kernel, several processes, or as a more general example, several clients compete for the same storage devices of a given server or, or a given uh, node in the data center. And um, I don't know, several containers compete for, use the same, share the same storage, several virtual machines, and so on and so forth, with many, many steps. So in all these cases, it is very important to have a sort of uh, traffic policeman that decides uh, um, who uses uh, that resource and when. So as to, tr to guarantee a low latency to everybody, a good fairness to everybody and so on. As for terminology, um, in case uh, this low latency is guaranteed to uh, interactive uh, tasks, um, such as, I don't know, starting an application, this is an example of an interactive task, if you guarantee a low latency to an interactive task, then you are actually guaranteeing a high responsiveness uh, to the system in which that interactive task is executed. Other examples of interactive tasks are opening a file, uh, saving a file, and, and so on. In particular, in the Android world, um, to measure responsiveness, to indicate responsiveness, the term lag is often used. So having a high responsiveness is said as having guaranteeing a low lag. Uh, so uh, this is in general what an IO scheduler does. Uh, more uh, concretely, uh, where are these IO schedulers? Well, they are in the block layer. In the Linux kernel, they are in the, this layer of the kernel called block layer. Um, there are currently two flavors of the block layer. One is the legacy block. The other one is block and queue, the new block layer, the new multi-queue um, parallel block layer. 
Um, this new block layer has been uh, devised to overcome the limitations of the legacy uh, block layer. Um, this limitation being that uh, it was not able any longer to handle uh, modern, very fast devices. These new fast devices have reached very high IOPS, um, number of operations per second, so very high throughput. And the only way to keep the pace with this very high throughput is to be very parallel, to fully use all the cores in a CPU. And this was not possible with the legacy block because it had only one single queue protected by a single lock. So this new blocking queue has multiple queues, basically one queue for each core in the CPU. And if you have a drive uh, with multiple hardware queues, because uh, modern NVMe drives can also have multiple queues in which you can put the I.O. requests, the I.O. commands to be executed, well, in that case, uh, the new um, block and queue also handle uh, separately every hardware queue of your drive. So it tries to reach the maximum possible parallelism. Okay, so these are the two current flavors of the block layer, with the legacy block currently going to die from uh, 4.21, from the next, next version of the, of the kernel. In the legacy block layer, there is a given set of I.O. schedulers, and this set differs from the set of I.O. schedulers available in the new block and queue. So in the legacy block layer, you can see from my slide the list of the uh, schedulers available. There are no hop, which basically does nothing, as the name suggests. Then there is a deadline. Then there is CFQ, which is the most accurate I.O. scheduler available in legacy block. Then you can see between parentheses this BFQ scheduler, which is actually my, my I.O. scheduler, the scheduler for which I am, I am how can I say, the domain developer. And BFQ is not available in mainline Linux in legacy block, but uh, as an out of three uh, contribution. Um, on the opposite end, uh, you can find BFQ in mainline, so directly in the official Linux kernel, but in the new block layer, in block NQ. You can see it at the last position in the list. And in the block NQ, there are also uh, different, new different schedulers. There is this known, which is uh, how can I say, even less than no op in uh, block. So no really is nothing, so no scheduler. Then there is this multi queue deadline, which is basically identical to deadline, so it's the counterpart of deadline for block and queue. Then there is this new Kyber scheduler, and as I already said, there is BFQ. Uh, Okay, so this is the context. Um, before I forget, of course, feel free to stop me if you have questions, doubts, or um, anything. Um, okay, uh, so the two worlds. Uh, there are basically two classes of operating system based on Linux, and these are basically Android. And I'm talking about the, the most widespread classes, of course. There may be other variants, but these are the main ones. So, Android and uh, the usual classical Linux distributions. Uh, as I already said, there is no BFQ in three in, for Android, but only out of three. And uh, at the mm, Basically, no support for block and queue uh, for MMC, so for flash, embedded flash storage, uh, basically because Android still uses uh, uh, old kernel version. I think they are working to move to 4.14, but still in their uh, support of um, MMC is rather weak and even uh, uh, the version of block and queue in that version of the kernel is rather immature. 
from in Linux distributions, uh, in contrast, we have BFQ from 4.16 and we have full block and queue uh, support. Okay, so for the first board Android, I'll show you results with this high key board and uh, Google Pixel 2, while for Linux distributions, again with the high key board so that we can see whether things change by changes the operating system, then the Pogo plug and the laptop that uh, I uh, told you. So Android, uh, um, we have, uh, um, I have this uh, first recorded uh, demo with this out of three uh, BFQ. With this demo, I want to show you first the problem and then BFQ as a solution. I have uh, uh, this, the video of this demo also locally, so it's probably better. And uh, here it is. Um, Okay, so uh, in this demo, um, um, I'll show you uh, lag and uh, video playing uh, uh, issues. Uh, so these are the details of the, uh, of the board, uh, kind of version, uh, hardware and so on. It's basically it's flash storage, EMMC, uh, slow CPU. Um, okay, you can reproduce all of this. And uh, we are about to see these results with, in terms of lag. To measure lag, I used uh, a popular application, Facebook, and measured how long it takes to start. And uh, to have a reference, I first tried with nothing in the ground. So the uh, board was idle, I just tried to start Facebook and measured how long it takes. Just six seconds. But what if, for example, an app update is in progress when I try to start Facebook? Uh, okay, to answer this question, so we triggered the update of a series of pre-downloaded apps and at the same time we wrote to a file at a controlled rate. The goal was to simulate at any possible download rate what happens if you start Facebook while there is an update in progress. We found out that up to 5 megabytes per second of speed of download, there are no issues. Issue starts at uh, above these 5 megabytes per second, and this is the results with no hope. The result is exactly the same with also CFQ or uh, data, so with any standard Linux scheduler. And as you can see, you will have to wait uh, for a lot of time. Of course, uh, we dropped caches before this test because we wanted an I.O. test, not a RAM test, RAM test. So nothing in cache. This is done from storage. And you have to wait for 28 seconds. But this happens at 20 megabytes per second. Uh, sorry, at five, uh, about 5 megabytes per second. If you go to 20 megabytes per second, then the waiting becomes infinite. So one question is, is this speed realistic? Well, it is at 100 megabits per second on a Wi-Fi, and it is realistic also, especially on faster uh, networks. Um, and it is certainly going to become a problem with the advent of 5G. So is it an uh, unsolvable problem? Uh, to see it, we retry using BFQ as IOS scheduler. So everything is the same, I just changed the scheduler moving to BFQ. And as you can see, the time becomes only 10 seconds. You can see it in the middle. Only 10 seconds. Why 4 extra seconds? Because of problems in the virtual memory, problems related to writes, problems that an IOS scheduler cannot solve, but that can be solved using BFQ. And this is something that we are about to do. So the startup time with no op is almost five times as high as in the case with no background or talk. While with BFQ it always remains the same, even if you increase the speed of uh, the download. So, uh, given these increasing problems with no op, we look at for the case where uh, the only bottleneck is the storage. And to look for this case in a realistic way, we try the case of a file transfer to the device. This is for no op, so just a file transfer to the device. 
Um, and the result that I'm about to show you are the same here for the case where you do a download on a gigabit local network. As for BFQ, we try to directly with something heavier, so not the same uh, um, lighter workload, not just a fine transfer, but with BFQ we try to direct it with something much heavier, uh, two file copies. And this is the result. Um, you are about to see that with no hope on the right hand side, uh, you will wait forever until the transfer finishes. You wait forever with no hope. In contrast, with BFQ, you wait for 11 seconds. Um, why uh, 11 seconds, still 11 seconds with BFQ? Because of those blocking issues caused by rights. And again, this is something we are working on. In any case, only 11 seconds, while you wait forever uh, with no, so it's better to stop here otherwise. Okay, um, second part video playback. We tried it directly with the heaviest workload seen so far. So, one file transfer for no hop and two file copies in parallel for BFQ. So, on the left hand side, you can see the playback with no IO in background, it starts in, um, very quickly, and the playback is smooth. In the middle you can see the playback with BFQ, it takes a few more seconds for the reason that I told you, after that the playback is perfectly smooth. With the no op, guess what is going to happen? You will wait for a lot of time. So to not keep you there waiting, we will jump, skip directly to when the playback finally starts which happens after more than one minute. So after waiting for so long, the video, as you're going to see, will freeze. Can you see it? It's freeze. It's frozen. And then it will freeze again in a moment. Mo okay, frozen again. Okay, so uh, this is everything about, uh, this is all about uh, the first two parts of this presentation, of this demo, sorry. Um, then it will show throughput, but I prefer to show you throughput results directly with some diagrams, so it's, it's, I can give you more complete results. Um, in contrast, uh, instead, I want to complete the part on leg and on playback issue, basically on leg, by showing you results uh, with uh, the fastest Google phone available, a Google Pixel 2. Now they're working on the Pixel 3, but at the time uh, when, when I record this demo, the Pixel 2 was the fastest uh, um, phone um, uh, available. So, um, I have also this demo locally, and basically I made this demo to answer this question. Uh, so let me, okay. This question, uh, do the latency problems that I showed you go away when you use a very fast device? So, I, again, I started to, I tried to start Facebook twice, first with the phone idle, and then when there was some copy of some music file going on. In both cases, I first terminated and cleared, and cleared the Facebook data so that I was, I made sure that there was IO needed to start Facebook. Um, okay, then there were system details, and this is what happened. So I terminate uh, Facebook, then I uh, clear its uh, data so that I'm sure that everything restarts from uh, scratch. And then I measure how long it takes. And it will be extremely fast, just uh, two seconds. And Facebook is ready. Okay, now let's see what happens if we to do some I.O. We start to copy, for example, uh, some some files, music files, two music folders. So we start the copy, and then again 
uh, we uh, are about to terminate uh, uh, Facebook, the Facebook app, um, then to clear the cache, you can start noting that the phone is slower, and things are happening more slowly. But the real surprise is when uh, finally I make it to start Facebook. Okay, this is your first opportunity for a coffee break because <laughs> there will be really a lot to wait. Really, really a lot. So this is an example of well, copying some files. The same happens if you transfer one file to the phone and the same happens if you have app updates in the background and you are on a fast network. So 23 uh, seconds. On a fast network, network, as we're saying, for example, this is what is probably going to happen with the shift to the uh, 5G. Uh, network. Uh, okay, so this is all about uh, uh, the test in the Android world. And uh, so the next question may be, okay, this happens with Android. Maybe it's an issue uh, with Android. If you move uh, to a um, standard uh, Linux distribution, then uh, problems uh, go uh, away. Uh, the uh, goal uh, of this uh, new demo that I'm about to show you is exactly to investigate this issue. This demo is done using the S benchmark suite, so you can repeat all these tests. And once again, um, I have it locally, and here it is. This time, the, uh, so Debian is the distribution. Uh, you will see in a moment details on the Debian version and on the kernel version. Here we have BFQ um, in the kernel because we have a recent enough version of the kernel, so there is block NQ. I will use as reference uh, um, application, this time I will use a light terminal, Xterm, and measure its startup time. Unfortunately, there are issues with the X server in this particular version of the kernel, so I had to resort to a different uh, um, solution, that is to replay the I.O. of Xterm instead of actually starting Xterm. But believe me, the results with this replay diora is exactly the same that you get if you really start extend. Believe me, or try yourself with the, with the suite. So, uh, first, to have a reference, uh, we uh, measure uh, the startup time of Xterm when there is nothing else uh, in the background. So, the device is uh, idle. We do this with a script of the benchmark suite and we set zero readers, zero writers, so nothing in the background, and the measured startup time is about 0 0.3 seconds. Yeah, okay. They repeat it just to have an idea. Okay. Now we retry, but we have one sequential reader and one sequential writer in the background. We leave known as IO scheduler. We try only once. So uh, only once, one reader, one writer sequential. We are basically emulating a file copy. So what happens if I try to start extend while there is the copy of a large file? Well, it happens that you can have your second coffee break and this time you have plenty of time to go take your coffee or even something to eat because <laughs> now you have to find something to say because you will have to wait for very 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 long time. The problem is that there is no control on I.O. Uh, so the sequential I.O. of the readers on the writer is better for true boot so the OS privileges it, and even the drive internally privileges the sequential I.O. to reach a higher throughput. And the basically random I.O. of X term waits for a lot of time before being set. 
so it's out of the bar is out of scale. So we just redrive this time with BFQ and again with a heavy workload, five sequential <coughs> reader plus five sequential writers. This time we try three times to have some statistics and five readers and five writers, but BFQ has higher schedulers. And as you're about to see, the study time is a little bit shorter, <laughs> 0 0.5. Actually, it's a little bit more. This was a lucky iteration. It should be around 0 0.7, 0 0.8, something like that. Let's see the last attempt. So 0 0.8. OK, so this, I guess, this is all uh, also uh, for the uh, Linux-based uh, part. Uh, I'm sorry, I have this figure here. Okay. Um, so, um, um, I have many, many, many results. I want to show you only some graphs. Um, results are basically the same, whatever application you try. For example, I tried Extern, Noom Terminal, LibreOffice Writer, basically the same. So, for brevity, I'll show you results only uh, for uh, extern and non terminal and finally we will move to truth because you may wonder okay I gain in terms of latency but maybe I'm losing a lot in terms of truth okay so first let's complete results in terms of latency in terms of responsiveness or of lag if you want to use Android terminology uh, in the graph graph on the left hand side we have on the y-axis the time to start X term, then you so you can see the different bars. There is one bar for each IOS scheduler available in Block and Q because this test is done with a recent version of the kernel, so with Block and Q. Um, finally, uh, the red line is the reference time. That is the time to start the same application when. Uh, the uh, device is completely idle when we are only doing the IO to start the application. Uh, finally, on the x-axis, you can see the workloads that are executed at the same time, so in parallel with the starting of the application. And there are, there is in the first case, 10 readers, sequential readers in parallel. This is one of the nastiest workloads for responsiveness because it's all sequential. It's a lot of IO and it is all sequential. So this is the most favored, the most uh, liked uh, IO for the drive and for the operating system. So it definitely tends to be privileged from uh, any point of view in any respect so it is very very hard to start the application quickly because the application usually does mostly random io but with the bfq you can see that the startup time of external with 10 sequential readers is the same as if the device was idle uh, you in, on, on the contrary you can see that it's much much higher with the upper IO scheduler. Then the second workload considered in this figure is the case where there are also writes. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this case, five readers plus five writers, writers, all sequential, again, to create the maximum possible interference against the startup of the application. Once again, with BFQ, uh, the startup time is very low, very close to the IO startup time. It is high with Kyber, while with the other IO scheduler, X10 does not start at all. That's the meaning of the X. The X means that it didn't not it didn't start in more than, if I remember well, more than 100 seconds. Then there is a timeout that stops the test. On the right hand side, you can see the same exact experiment, but done this time with no terminal, so a larger application. And again, with VFQ, the startup time is rather close to the idle startup time, while with the other schedulers, the application does not start at all. So, this is what happens on the high key with Debian. 
so the, the question that you might have, okay, but maybe we lose a lot in terms of throughput. No, uh, we I ran this test with various kinds of workloads. The same sequential workloads used for the previous latency test, plus the same workloads, but this time random, not sequential, but random. So 10 readers, but random, five readers plus five, five writers, but random. So we have these four workloads, and as you can see, the throughput with BFQ is close to the throughput with the other schedulers. Um, in, there are two axes also in this case, in case of five readers, five writer sequential, because as I told you, sequential I.O. is the main enemy of responsiveness, and if you also have rights, things get more complicated, and the final result is that with them, QDEL and then with known, you lose control of the board, so the script is not able to stop the I.O. The I.O. never stops, so I had just to shut off the board, and so we have no real, reliable results for the case of five readers, five writers, sequential. Okay, so this is all for these first boards. Then I tried with um, much slower, much cheaper, much simpler hardware, this Pogo Plug V4. Four, the tests have been actually run by Linus uh, Wale, um, in particular with several um, <laughs> several cards, SD cards. Um, this is an interesting case because BFQ was not that good. I show you results only for each term because the other uh, test cases didn't say much more. And as you can see, in this case, the startup time with BFQ is much higher than the idle startup time. Still, with BFQ, startup time is uh, much lower than with any of the other schedulers, but it's higher with respect to the other case. So, performance is worse. Why? Uh, my doubt was that some other resource was the actual bottleneck. So to come to clear this doubt, we repeated Linus repeated the same test with the same SD card, but now using his laptop, which is of course much faster in any other respect. Um, he ran this test actually with many cards. Um, the the uh, or the relative performance of all these schedulers except for the FQ, was much worse than with the high key, so much worse results, because they said the SD cards are slower than EMMC. And then once again, for brevity, I showed you results only with XTERM and NUM terminal, and only for the 8 gigabytes card, that is the same exact case as for the POGO plug, so same SD card, but this time with the laptop, and once again, Results go back saying that this BFQ is extremely fast in starting application, while as you can see, the performance of the other schedulers is much worse with respect to what I showed you for the uh, for the high key. So, um, uh, what is the problem? The problem is that with the Poco plug. Um, the CPU was the bottleneck. While if the only bottleneck becomes again storage, then everything works perfectly. Okay, this is the end of the first part. I hope that uh, none of you already uh, fell asleep. And uh, don't worry, we have only uh, the, the last part. Then, uh, then it's it's over. Um, so some possible questions that you might have are probably this one. Okay, Paul, you showed us very bad problems, but we never bumped into these problems. Maybe, maybe. Um, so why we don't usually see these problems? Another possible question is, why is the FQ magic? So as for the first question, um, why normal responsiveness in normal usage? Because storage is almost always underutilized. That's the reason. You run into troubles if, in parallel, for example, 
you have uh, some copies of large files, one or more copies of large files. Maybe there is a compilation, maybe a software update in progress, maybe there is some indexing going on, and so on. And this problem is going to become really worse as the network speed increases. Um, so, you know, with updates on your phone, probably you haven't seen many times like issues, but now with the shift to 5G, probably you will start to see these problems because network tends to become uh, as fast as storage or even uh, faster. So this is one of the reasons why, for example, three phone companies are migrating to BFQ in their Android frameworks. This is a joint project. And if some of you wants to join, of course, you are welcome. Um, in addition, several Linux distributions in these years have already migrated to BFQ, and new relevant, important distributions are going to do that. So, uh, the downside. So, but what happens in case, actually, you are not in the average lucky case, and you are in one of those cases in which there is some additional I.O. going on, well, things change dramatically. As I showed you, there are serious responsiveness problems. The practical result is that your system, uh, they become very, very slow and uh, almost impossible to use. Um, there is no practical solution apart uh, from using a BFQ, and you can find online several testimonials of these problems and of this um, uh, solution. Uh, usually, one gets accustomed to it, so it thinks that this is somehow normal and inevitable, that it is time to do something else and wait for the machine to finish the IO. But as I showed you, it is not. And actually, some companies are turn these problems into an opportunity by proposing devices, frameworks that provide a much better user experience, or as I already told you, there is currently a migration, simply a migration to the FQ. Um, another doubt may be, okay, but so, there are systems where actually there is a lot of I.O. going on, for example, on servers. So why do services just work? Why is it so easy to just see a video on YouTube without any issue? Or why web servers just work well and so on? Well, the reason is that uh, engineers over-provision resources so as to guarantee that the system is systematically underutilized in terms of I.O. But this is evidently a solution, uh, very costly solutions in, in terms of resources, of energy, of, of money. Um, or usually there are some ad hoc uh, scheduling or tuning solutions. I don't want to enter uh, to, to add more details, if you are curious, I can ask for any questions, but these solutions are typically very rigid and some, if something changes in the workload, they, they don't work any longer. I wrote an article on this and currently uh, trying to, to have it published in, uh, in these days. Last question may be, okay, why is BFQ magic? How does BFQ make it? Well, the answer is just through a combination of three main techniques. BFQ is the result basically of the combination of three main techniques. First, accurate implementation of the proportion of a proportional share policy. Proportional sharing of the truth of the device. So uh, every process Actually, every group of processes you can also um, share through in groups, but this is another different story. Anyway, every process gets a share of the throughput proportional to a weight. Every process is assigned, can be assigned a weight and receives a share of the throughput proportional to that weight. So this is the first thing, accurate implementation of proportional shared policy. Second, Automatic automatic detection of which I.O. to privilege. 
for example, get your open application that is started. You have to have that application if you want it to start quickly. Basically, we have to achieve this goal, attain this goal by raising the weight of the processes whose I.O. needs to be um, served more quickly. Finally, uh, the FQ performs the, dis the plugging of the dispatching of the I.O. in some cases. When? Uh, when there is a process that is in service, but momentarily it has no pending I.O., but it is going to have pending I.O. very soon, well, in that case, BFQ suspends the service of any other process, while the other schedulers, when one process is idle, they immediately go on serving other processes. And this breaks the service guarantees for the process in service. In contrast, BFQ plugs the I.O. of the other processes if the process in service happens to be unlucky for short time intervals. Um, the problem of this plugging is that it may lower throughput because modern devices, as I told you at the beginning of this presentation, need a lot of I.O. coming, arriving, need to be fed with a lot of I.O. requests that they queue internally. If you plug the dispatch of the I.O., you reduce the filling number of requests in the queues of the device, so you lower the truth. For this reason, uh, BFQ tries to be as opportunistic as possible and tries to plug I.O. only when strictly needed. So this is very, very briefly, um, these are very, very briefly the main reasons why you have seen this good performance of BFQ. And this is all that I wanted to, uh, to tell you. Uh, and I thank you for listening, uh, uh, listening to me. And uh, as uh, I already said, if uh, uh, there, are, there are questions, uh, here I am. OK, gracias, gracias, yeah, Paolo. Um, any questions or uh, suggestions or discussions? Maybe somebody will be surprised. <laughs> Shocked for the Jellac uh, and uh, uh, hello. Um, what uh, maybe you covered this and I missed it? But what are the prospects for BFQ getting mainlined? Is there anyone working on that? Uh, so you 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 are asking whether BFQ is going into mainline? Yes. Yeah, it is already there. It's already there from 4.16. Oh, I, I thought earlier in the presentation you said it wasn't there yet. Okay, sorry, my yeah, mistake. Yeah, 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 because the situation is very confusing. Um, <laughs> let me, let me uh, skip back uh, if I make it uh, to uh, the, that slide. You don't have BFQ in legacy block. In the legacy block layer, you have it in block and queue. And the reason is that uh, uh, the block layer maintainer didn't want any modification to the legacy block layer because they want to kill it. And they have already wiped it out. You won't have any legacy block layer from uh, 4.21. So their vision is that there must be only block and queue. And that's why they told me you have to put BFQ only in block and queue. Don't do that for legacy block layer because we don't want to use it any longer. We want it to die. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other? Well. <laughs> Okay, thank you for the introducing new technology. So I'm from the semiconductor company, and uh, my latest headache is, uh, you know, the some hardware like our Arca suite contains some the hardware, the buffer controlling system, especially for the memory read uh, three device interface. So this kind of 
buffer sequential read optimization is a very tricky part. And uh, do you have any guidance to the, the people to how to manage this kind of optimization? Also include some of the hardware side optimization, also the this kind of scheduling side optimization. Because uh, this map is some of the target specific optimization effort. And uh, this is very clear, as you pointed, that this is very beneficial for some specific use case. But the problem is how we can guide the people to utilize this kind of new features. So this, this is my headache for now. So do you have any hint for me? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to solve this problem the other way around. Instead of, uh, um, how can I say, obliging you to do the right thing, I'm trying to do the right thing for you. Um, so um, I'm basically um, I'm trying, uh, and it seems to be uh, things seems to be already working actually. Um, you just switch to BFQ um, and you get these benefits, which means that you have a high throughput, you have a high I/O control. BFQ tries to manage buffers. Uh, I/O plugging, uh, um, wh whatever uh, for you, um, you don't have any headache, uh, and you are just happy. <laughs> so <laughs> this is this is the attempt. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in this presentation, I wanted to show you only results for the specific case, a uh, use case of a personal use. Uh, for which basically I imagine people that are worried only on the system being very responsive. But I can point you to an article, uh, an article of mine published on LWN a few weeks ago, in which I show you that uh, now you can also do things uh, well in servers. For example, you may have containers that get their fair share of the throughput and you enjoy a very low latency inside every container. You have virtual machines that get their fair share of throughput and very low latency for their guests inside the machines. You have web servers uh, providing bandwidth guarantees. You have video streaming with the bandwidth guarantee, um, how can I say, in place. Uh, so, yeah, th th I mean, uh, basically, if everything goes on working well, uh, the, the, the main thing that you have to do is just switch to BFQ, and, uh, and if you, I mean, if everything goes well, uh, your system gives you bandwidth guarantees, gives you low latency, gives you a high throughput. If something does not go well, uh, call me, <laughs> write to me, and uh, as it already happened, I will be more than happy, happy to help you for your specific uh, uh, use case. But yes, the idea is that I try to have on my shoulder the burden of optimizing uh, things. Okay, good. So I try to convince the people at least to try to switch on the BFQ thing first and then see the, what happens. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or uh, discussions? Okay, Paolo, is it possible for you to ask me uh, to send your presentation material to me? My name is Ueda and I will be able to uh, place it on the, on the wiki to share ev by everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward. And I hope you can enjoy this presentation. And uh, please, uh, please join uh, another case, uh, another you know, Japan Jamboree. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you all. Thank you. Bye. And have a good day.